Welcome to the cell review video. We're going to start by looking at what is a cell. It's the smallest unit of structure and function. Doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but what we mean by structure is that all cells or cells are used to make tissues and organs in larger organisms. Cells, specifically eukaryotic cells, are used. Function. Cells are the basic unit of function, meaning they're the smallest thing that carries out life functions, metabolism. Therefore, they are the smallest organism, in particular bacteria. Second, all life is made of at least one cell. You could have single cell bacteria, protists, amoebas, and you could have us. And all cells come from pre-existing cells, meaning they just don't pop out of nowhere. These three things make up the cell theory. There are some exceptions to the cell theory. First, the first cell could not have possibly come from another cell, because then it would not have been the first cell. So where the heck did this first cell come from? Let's take a look. The first molecule to thought to have evolved is RNA. Also, a membrane, which is made of fats. So now you have a membrane, and inside and outside, and you have genetic material, and little rRNA molecules. This makes up a prokaryotic cell, the prototype cells. There are no membrane-bound organelles, meaning no organelles with membranes, just a cell membrane, ribosomes, and genetic material. An example of a prokaryote would be bacteria. Early on, the first cells were thought to have been heterotrophic, meaning they got their nutrients and energy from the external environment. So they didn't really have any specialized function in these cells. They were just able to get materials and energy from their external environment. But their special function did evolve. Photosynthesis. These bacterial cells were then able to make or synthesize their own food, glucose. Later on, a second specialized function evolved, cell respiration, where they could extract as much energy as possible from these organic nutrients like glucose. So these bacterial cells, some became extremely good at making glucose, some became really good at making ATP. And cells were still heterotrophic, some of them, and they loved to eat. So you had this one cell eating or consuming this bacteria that's really good at making glucose. And this became a double membraned organelle known as the chloroplast. And it started making glucose for this big cell. The other bacteria really good at making ATP got ingested as well. This became the first mitochondria. This made ATP for itself and for the cell. That great big cell that ate both these things provided protection for the primitive chloroplast and primitive mitochondria. Chloroplast and mitochondria, these organelles, they do contain some of their own genetic material because they did come from bacteria. This is known as the endosymbiotic theory and gave rise to the first eukaryotic cell. Second exception to the cell theory is that viruses are not considered living things. They're not cells. The reason being, viruses cannot reproduce by themselves. They need a host. What happens is you have a virus attaches to a cell, squirts in its genetic material, reproduces like crazy until that cell explodes and a bunch of little bacteria fly out, latch on to another cell, squirt their material in, and they reproduce until those cells explode, and so on. So we're going to go back to an idea. Cells are the basic unit of structure, meaning you need them to build things. Let's see how that's done. Start with one cell. If you put a whole bunch of similar cells together, you get a thing known as a tissue. And usually tissues are gotten 
for like biopsies to see if you have you know a cancerous cell or something and they get a tissue because you might get a good cell if you just take one but if you take a bunch you might get some good cells but you'll also get the bad ones so you have a more accurate test now you have a group of cells tissues put together to make organs so a whole bunch of stomach tissue will make the stomach similar organs will make systems organ systems like the circulatory system digestive and nervous and all your organ systems will make up a complete organism these organ systems will carry out metabolism life functions for an organism but what about a little cell what carries out life functions for cells for that we have to look at things that are smaller than cells we'll have to go inside a cell and look at these parts being drawn right now these are known as cell organelles they carry out life functions for cells so organ systems carry out life functions for big organisms like us Organelles carry out life functions or metabolism for individual cells. These organelles use and make things called compounds. Things like glucose, C6H12O6, oxygen, O2, and carbon dioxide, CO2. And if you want to take it further, compounds are made up of atoms. Atoms are made up of protons and neutrons and electrons. So let's now take a look at the organelles and how they carry out these life functions. Take a look at a plant cell, and we're going to look at the outer barrier, a cell wall. You only find this in plant cells, and you must know the reason. The reason is that they can't move. They have to take what's given to them. Cloudy day, a sunny day, dry conditions, very wet conditions. It's used for protection. Generally, it keeps the cell from exploding tough outer barrier made of um, material called cellulose. Material is gaping holes in the cell wall. It does not really control what goes into and out of the cell. It just prevents huge things from getting in. But this sugary cellulose is really undigestible. You find it in outer covering of seeds and things like corn. You eat it and it comes out the same exact way as you ate it. There are certain organisms, like termites, they have bacteria in their gut that are able to digest this cellulose or wood. The inner thing, the inner barrier, is referred to as the cell membrane. And it's made of these little jellyfish looking things, referred to as phospholipids. You also have these green things in there as well. These are proteins that are sporadic in the cell membrane. So the cell membrane is made of phospholipids. And it's found in all cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The phospholipids, you're going to find them in two layers. Therefore, the cell membrane is a bilayer of phospholipids. The little circular head is the phosphate. The little stringy things at the bottom, they're lipids or fatty acids. Those lipids are hydrophobic. They don't like water. And the little circles, the phosphate heads, love water, which allows water to go up to the outside of the membrane and all the way up to the membrane on the inside. These specialized proteins, they allow cellular messages to be transmitted. They allow certain materials to go in and out. And even tough material, things that are charged, like ions, it allows that material to go in. It may require the use of energy, but nonetheless, the cell membrane allows things to go into and out of the cell. Therefore, the cell membrane regulates what materials enter and leave. That brings us to the life functions that are carried out by this thing. Cell membrane carries out 
regulation, meaning it controls what goes in and out. Excretion, because it controls what goes out. Nutrition, because it controls what comes in. And transport, because it controls what goes in and out. Spells out a little acronym, RENT. The cell membrane also is, goes by many names. First major name is the phospholipid bilayer because it's two layers of phospholipids. Cell membrane is also selectively permeable, doesn't let everything in and out. You could also think of it as a semi-permeable, it's kind of permeable. It lets some things in and some things out. The final name for the cell membrane is the plasma membrane. Guess this name because it is a bendable, flexible membrane. All right, let's take a look now at this dark spot that usually is seen under the microscope, the compound microscope. The reason it's seen is because it's loaded with this stringy material. We have 46 strands of this stringy material in the nucleus, referred to as DNA. We have 46 strands of DNA, or 46 chromosomes. That's our genetic material. And the DNA is the instructions to make all the proteins in a cell. Proteins control our characteristics or our traits. There is a little spot in the nucleus where the DNA overlaps, and it leads to a little dark spot in the already dark nucleus. That's called the nucleolus. This DNA here has the instructions to make ribosomes. This is where ribosomes are made. Ribosomes just consist of R RNA, ribosomal RNA. Let's see how this is happening. The DNA will split open, as shown here. And the instructions in the DNA will allow this new little red strand, the rRNA strand, right here, to be drawn, or to be made. The rRNA will break away, and it will start to fold on itself. And it will fold eventually into a little ball known as a ribosome. Ribosome's purpose in a cell is to synthesize proteins, and they use the DNA instructions, the rest of the DNA instructions, to do so. Again, ribosomes are made of rRNA, no membrane at all. Around this nucleus, you have a system of tubes. Take a little time to draw. These tubes, some of them, have little round dots on them. Those are ribosomes. Always are represented by little dots. The endoplasmic reticulum is the system of tubes around the nucleus. And ribosomes will attach to it or they'll be floating in the cytoplasm. Again, ribosomes make proteins. The ER, or endoplasmic reticulum, that has the ribosomes attached is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or the rough ER, RER. This is the site of protein synthesis, but not just for any proteins. These proteins will ultimately leave the cell or become part of the cell membrane. There are exceptions, though. Lysosomes and peroxisomes do get their proteins from the rough ER, even though they're inside the cell. So rough ER makes proteins that leave the cell or become part of the membrane, with two exceptions. The free ribosomes, they make proteins that will stay in the cell. These proteins usually get incorporated into the organelles and allow the organelles to carry out their functions. We're looking inside the rough ER. These little red dots are proteins that are getting synthesized. The rough ER membrane pinches off and creates a little vesicle filled with proteins. These proteins will combine with this stack of pancakes, it looks like. This little organelle 
called the Golgi apparatus or Golgi bodies. The proteins will go from layer to layer in the Golgi and become functional. Once functional, the proteins pinch off from the Golgi, combine with the membrane, and the proteins will leave. Some of the proteins, the green ones, you could see become incorporated into the actual cell membrane. Again, these proteins come from the rough ER. Rough ER makes proteins that leave or stay in the membrane. The Golgi bodies are an intermediate. They will modify the proteins, making them functional, and it also tells the proteins exactly where to go. Kind of like a postal service. Why are all these membranes, though, able to pinch off and attach and pinch off again and attach? Like the ER membrane pinches off and becomes part of the Golgi membrane. The Golgi membrane becomes part of the cell membrane. It's all because the membranes, all membranes, are made of the same material, phospholipids, those little jellyfish-looking things. The next logical question, where are all these membranes, these fatty membranes, made? They're made in the endoplasmic reticulum that's smooth, the smooth ER. The smooth ER, right here, is responsible for lipid synthesis, or the synthesis of fats or lipids. Let's focus in over here on this cell. Plant cells in particular have these things. An organelle, double membraned, with little stacks of pancakes inside, or it could be shown as a little darkened hockey puck. These organelles are very good at making glucose, C6H12O6. These organelles are known as chloroplasts, only found in plant cells or autotrophic cells, because autotrophs have to make their own food. Why? Because they don't move. And the process of making food is referred to as photosynthesis. So photosynthesis happens at chloroplasts. And the purpose of photosynthesis is to make food, in particular glucose. You could also think of this process of photosynthesis as trapping solar energy, energy from the sun, in the carbon-hydrogen bonds of glucose right there. So the sun's energy goes to the chloroplast and becomes trapped or incorporated into the glucose molecule. Where do the atoms come from? The carbon and hydrogen glucose, or sorry, carbon and oxygen and glucose come from carbon dioxide. And the hydrogen and glucose comes from water. The extra oxygen from water becomes free oxygen. So all the atoms are accounted for, the energy is accounted for. We know where everything comes from and where it, and what it becomes. Why do cells need glucose? It's going to be used by this organelle to make usable energy called ATP. And if just glucose is used, only two ATP are made. The atoms have to be accounted for. So if you use oxygen, you're going to make 36 ATP, a lot of usable energy. ATP is usable, glucose is stored chemical energy, and the sun is referred to as solar energy. So it goes from solar energy to stored chemical to ATP usable. This organelle that rips out the energy in glucose and makes it into ATP is called mitochondria. Found in plant and animal cells, it synthesizes ATP, as we said 500 times. And ATP is going to be used to carry out all life functions. This process of taking energy out of glucose and making ATP is known as cellular respiration. These two organelles, as mentioned earlier, they used to be bacteria. And what led people to think this is the fact that they have two membranes and they also have some of their own genetic material. Just going to draw a quick little picture. It's the chloroplast, double membraned organelle with stacks of pancakes inside. And here's the mitochondria with one membrane and the inner membrane that's squiggly lined. 
Plant cells will generally, generally use the glucose right away, but they do make a lot of extra. And all the extra glucose will be stored in this large central vacuole. Glucose will be stored as a long molecule called starch. So this organelle right here is a vacuole. And it doesn't only store extra glucose for food, it stores water and also waste. It must be noted that a vacuole in plants, they have one very large central vacuole. That's different than animal cells that have many small vacuoles. The reason plants have one large central one is because they can't move. It all goes back to they can't move. So they must store as much material as possible. Our last organelle in this picture this thing called a peroxisome. It regulates or controls the pH of the cell and that's necessary for proper cellular function. Certain enzymes and chemical reactions only happen in certain pH levels. So where do these proteins for organelles come from? We did mention it. Free ribosomes, you got it. Except for the lysosome, and peroxisome. Let's look at this cell. Not square, it's more circular. This is an animal cell. It has a lot of the same organelles that I'm just drawing in right here, but it does have some differences. It has many small vacuoles as opposed to one large one in plants. Animal cells besides being round and having small vacuoles, they have this organelle that will go up to a small vacuole with food and it will combine with it. And it can because all membranes are made of phospholipids. And it will unleash digestive enzymes or hydrolytic enzymes into that vacuole to break down the food into nutrients. It's kind of like the stomach of the cell. Now it's only found in animal cells because they have to eat stuff and if you eat stuff it has to get broken down and now you have a vacuole with nutrients so in summary this is a lysosome contains digestive enzymes only in animal cells because animal cells as we said are heterotrophic they eat stuff brings us to Another idea, glucose is not made in an animal cell. Animal cells must eat or consume glucose. Once eaten or ingested, it has to pass, sorry, in order to be ingested, it must pass the cell membrane. And once it does, it goes to the mitochondria to be transformed into usable energy, ATP. So the cell membrane does kind of play a part in energy production. Without the cell membrane letting glucose in, there'll be no glucose in an animal cell. So the cell membrane and the mitochondria are indirectly and directly responsible for producing ATP in heterotrophs because glucose must enter the cell, cell membrane involvement, and the mitochondria rips out the energy and makes it ATP. Animal cells also have these little things called centrioles, only in animal cells. And they're going to be important for cell division. They're going to act as little anchors for spindle fibers, string-like ropes that wrap around chromosomes and tear them apart. So on the left, I have an animal cell dividing. On the right, I have a plant cell. These little red lines are the spindle fibers. In animal cells, they have the centrioles for the spindle fibers to attach to and pull the chromosomes apart. In plant cells, they have the cell wall as an anchor for the spindle fibers to hold on to. Therefore, centrioles are not needed. Let's take a look at plant and animal cell comparison. Plant cells, of course, have chloroplasts. 
to make food. Glucose. They also have cell walls that give them a square boxy shape for protection. And they also have a large central vacuole. They have all these things because they can't move. Animal cells have centrioles and lysosomes. Centrioles because they need anchors for cell division, for the spindle fibers to latch onto. Lysosomes because animal cells eat things and those things or food must be digested. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Both of them account for all the cells on Earth. Prokaryotes are prototypes like bacteria. Eukaryotes are advanced. They have membrane-bound organelles. Therefore, all cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic, contain or have a cell membrane. You need an inside and outside. They have ribosomes made of RNA, no membrane. Cytoplasm, which is liquid, carries out transport, and they have genetic material. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.